Hi everyone, um, <laughs> bear with me while I figure this out. Let's see if this works. Hi, Yuli. Hi, Zelda. What's up? How's it going? Um, oh, it says Chase joined, but I don't see her. We don't need her. I don't know how this works. I've, <clears throat> I've never done this. <laughs> we can do it on our so own. Oh my god. <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sent her a request. <laughs> <clears throat> she's busy. Yeah, she's she has better things to do with her time. <laughs> How's it going, Yui? Yeah. Oh, it's good. I think I finally am um, rested. Nice, yeah. Yeah, it's been, yeah, we've been doing a lot of night shoots, everyone. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been very tiring. It was awesome. That's fun. I, I actually really like night shoots. That's been fun. I really like night shoots too. I don't know. I get very like um, I get like a really strong sense of community when everyone's just tired together. Yeah. It's, it's everyone's really... like exhausted. It yeah, morning. everyone's exhausted, but we're all exhausted together. Yeah, it's it's nice. What's the yerba mate flavor? Enlightenment. Feeling I've heard that's the best one. It's. I haven't tried any others, but it's the best one to me. Where is Sorry y'all, we're just trying to Oh, I'm sending an invite to Chase. Okay. <clears throat> Blue for you all the way. I don't like blueberry flavor. Hi guys. Hi Chase. Oh. There you are. Hey. Oh. How's it going? I was trying to go live from my own account, but that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> you said I'm gonna do my own live. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, we are just chasing Luke. Someone says Chase and Lukita are very confused. We are. <laughs> Luke and Lukita <laughs> try to do the same thing. I don't know anything about technology, so I'm with y'all on that one. Where is Lukita? <laughs> and she's trying to start her own live, which I was doing momentarily, and then there's just there was no way out. Please, like, at the she end said, of please. <laughs> Oh, answer me. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Lukita. Oh, I'm just okay. kidding. I'm, for some reason, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Lukita Maxwell. Oh, it's not letting me add her for some reason. Do you guys know? Um, I'm terrible with this. She's stuck in cyberspace. <laughs> <laughs> Lukita, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh no. It's like not letting me... Um. Oh my gosh, it's not letting me add. How do I do this? Oh, invite to join? Here we go. That sounds right. That sounds okay. <laughs> the little like thing at the bottom disappeared. <laughs> okay. Okay. She should be able to get in now. Heck yeah. Hi, Lupita. <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> I still can't see anything. My screen is black. Just give oh, it a second. Take a deep breath. Somebody said y'all <laughs> boomers. <laughs> For real. Fair enough. For real. <laughs> um hi everyone how's it going hi Good. they literally hi. sent me a whole like instruction manual on how to do this and i'm still struggling so <laughs> same, same. <laughs> um yeah so 
Hi, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't, I'm Max. And um, do you guys want to all introduce yourselves? <laughs> Did my Wi-Fi cut out? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Okay, should I? Okay. Introduce yourself again, I just said, Zelda. Yes, I'm Zelda Barnes. Um, I'm a co-creator and executive producer on Generation, which is on HBO Max. Um, and I'm here with some of our series regulars. Um, you guys want to say hi? Yeah, hi. Hi. Hey. I play Riley. <laughs> my name's Chase. Sweet Wonders. And I'm excited to be here. Yuli, take it away. Me, I'm Yuli Schlesinger. I play Nathan on Generation. I'm Lukita Maxwell, and I play Lila on Generation. <laughs> um, and we are here with Campus Pride. We're just going to talk a little bit about queer representation in the show. Um, so my first question for you guys, what are some of your favorite moments of like queer celebration and queer representation on Generation? That was a lot of like Asian ending words. Riley Greta sleepover. Wow. Yeah, in. Oh my God. In. Riley wow, Greta sleepover good. episode five. It's the that's best good. moment. It's so I was. It's so tense. It's so like, oh, what's gonna happen? Oh my God. I love it. I love it's it. It's so tense and so tangible, and I've been there, and it's just like a. It's the queer gay panic, guys. It's just the. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I. I. My. My fear has got to be. I mean, uh, the three-way kiss, I feel like between- I thought the, about saying that. Yeah. Between, <laughs> true true bicon moment. True bicon moment. And also just like sets up so much, like, I don't know. Just what is unsaid is just like so, so, so tangible. And I, yeah, I feel like those just those looks, those side eyes, just like fuel the gay, the queer, the gay panic. Fuel so. the gay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of gay panic in the Greta Riley relationship. It's it's very sweet. I love their dynamic. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> uh, what so, about you, Zelda? That was your favorite one. Yeah. Oh my god, I have so many. Um, I do really love. I do really love all of Greta Riley. Kind of, I actually really love in the pilot. Um, Greta's like gay panic moment when she's like talking to Riley, and it's so obvious she likes her, and she starts seeing like the little slow motion like moments. Um, yeah, I just love how strongly Greta feels. I think that that's like a really sweet like little gay babies moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. I love that scene too because like that was at a point where like. Lots of actors had like no idea about like the visual language of the show, and so mm. like, but 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 in seeing that, and seeing the first kind of the pilot, and seeing how it's like all these like POV stolen glances, and like using using like the lenses that really like put you in almost like a fisheye POV of the character, it's like it really captures like how how that panic feels, and how like how like when you feel so hard, you like kind of black out when you're around your crush, and yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you start being so awkward and you, like, can't stop. Yeah, no, totally. You can't <laughs> stop. You can't stop. You're rolling down a hill. It never <laughs> ends. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, so each of your characters have a very different kind of, like, journey with queerness and with the GSA specifically. Um, I don't know. I think that's really interesting, specifically the dichotomy between Riley and Nathan's characters and how Nathan has this really strong desire to be labeled correctly and how Riley kind of is more open to fluidity and not really putting a label on her sexuality. Um, would you say that you identify with your characters like interpretation of their own identity? That's interesting. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, I just thought I was always thought it was so interesting that Riley and Nathan are best friends, and they, <laughs> you know, they're they're both bi, and and they like, and yet Nathan has such a different journey than Riley does, and Riley just like approaches it for better or for worse, like totally, like in, in like you know totally kind of in the backseat of her own journey, and. Um, which is so counterintuitive to like how Nathan and you know Riley should operate, um, like. But Riley's almost like 
as in control, if not less in control of like her journey than, than, than Nathan is, um, because he at least is like choosing to confront these issues like head on while Riley's like, you know, does not choose to, to like label herself one way or another. Um, and I think which is like representative of, of a, a lot of Gen Z who, you know, have a very specific idea of like what their, what their sexual like identity is, but do not want to be um, put into a box or are labeled in such a way. So I feel like uh, at least for Riley, like that is kind of how I, I always saw her. Um, but I always thought it was, you know, funny that, that you know, Riley and, and Nathan, you know, don't really like speak candid so candidly about this issue and they kind of, they're there for each other and they support each other so much and yet, you know, like they almost don't have to use the words to, to bridge like that divide when it comes to their, their sexual orientations. Yeah, absolutely. Beautifully said. Yeah, really well said. Um, I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like me, like personally, Yuli relate more to like Riley, just in general in the show. Um, but especially in terms of like, you know, labeling their sexuality. Um, but one thing that I found, found really cool about Nathan from like the jump was just that like, his problem wasn't, it was, he was never confused about his bisexuality. Mm -hmm. Like that was always just like, he knew, he knew. And that wasn't the problem. And that wasn't the character's problem. It was just like, it was more so, you know, he had just normal fucking problems. He just had family drama and fucking unrequited love. And it wasn't, it wasn't a whole story about like, oh my God, I, am I bi? Do I like, do I like girls or do I like guys? Or, you know, is it mm -hmm. one or the other? I thought, I thought it was nice to just have like a firmly like bi character who knew he was yeah. bi. Absolutely. And I do think that that's important with bisexual representation, because I do think that bi people just throughout history have always been referred to as confused. And I think that when you're bi and you're not confused, that's really invalidating to hear for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, I see a lot of people asking what our favorite toes are. Do we want to answer? <laughs> <laughs> what are your oh guys' favorite toes? <laughs> I have answered this in a formal setting before. <laughs> really? Why? I think it was in the same, I don't know, maybe I'm just having intense deja vu when I dreamed this last night, but it's, I answered the middle toe because everyone always forgets about it. What do but you it's mean really everyone functional. always forgets about it? What do you mean also, you answered it in a functional? formal setting? I don't know the details and I don't care to go into them <laughs> right now, but I have. The middle toe. <laughs> because everyone always forgets about it. <laughs> you crack me up, you're <laughs> killing me. Um, I'm gonna go with Pinky. Uh, Kita, Zelda? favorite toe? Kita? Anyone? Anyone? My, I, just I, it, I, I don't have a preference. I don't think oh. I honestly thought about it enough to have like an actual answer. Very <laughs> political answers from Zelda and Kita. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Not starting up a controversy. <laughs> um, People commenting, not the toking. Um, <laughs> but I do you talk about how um, how <laughs> how gay are. What? Oops. Oh no. <laughs> What's happening? There she is. There you are. I'm gonna move because my wife. Let's try this again. So. <sighs> the McDonald's Wi Fi. The McDonald's Wi Fi. <laughs> Known to frequent it. <laughs> what zodiac signs are you guys, Kita? In real life, I'm a Scorpio, and I think Isla. I don't know, can, Zelda. Can we talk? If so, I don't Perfect. know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually. Yes. 
why why wouldn't we be able to talk about our characters yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know i think delilah is an aries taurus either taurus moon or taurus rising oh you don't know no i well, I, I don't know for sure but you're just yeah okay. moon and rising cool. are but i think she's an aries taurus cool what about you guys riley's a libra but Chase is a um, Gemini Taurus cusp. Oh, that's a cool cusp. I'm not you referring <laughs> yourself in the third person. Yeah, that's, that's the thing I do. <laughs> Yuli? Um, Nathan's a Gemini, obviously. I want to. I do want to know, like, what the moon and the rising. I wouldn't know what that meant if I knew, but I do want to yeah, know what his moon and rising are. Yeah, we, unfortunately, we should actually do, like, full-on birth charts for all the characters. Justice would have Justice would have. Justice, Justice, yeah, Justice, uh, Justice already has done the full birth charts for all the characters. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, I'm a Virgo. I feel like that's pretty predictable. People often are like, you're such a Virgo. So that's like, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but you're such a Virgo. <laughs> yeah, Yuli and Zelda, you guys are both... Virgo Taurus moons. Oh really? Real life. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Virgo Taurus moon and Capricorn rising, so I'm all Earth signs. I'm, yeah, me. I'm know. also I'm also a triple Earth. I'm Virgo Taurus Taurus. That's so. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, and I'm triple water. I'm Cancer or Scorpio Cancer Pisces. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I think astrology is so interesting. I like. I don't think I have. A great like understanding of how it all works the way like justice does like justice loves astrology but i think it's so cool yeah yes 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 guys how did we feel about episode eight i actually yeah, rewatched i rewatched some some clips from it last night i rewatched some clips from seven and eight and i honestly i was sitting there and i was just like you guys are such amazing actors <laughs> i was like i was just <laughs> watching it and just like I was like, wow, everyone's so talented and the writing is so good. <laughs> I, yeah, I rewatched episode eight as I fell asleep last night too. <laughs> and I like, I really, I feel like it is so, it's such a beautiful way to end, like beautifully like quiet way to end because I mean, we, we find these characters like, and they've joined the GSA and it's like so, like nobody really knows each other. It's like, it's so kind of chaotic and they're forced into this lockdown together. And then by the end, by the eighth episode, like they have found their chosen queer family. And I feel like it's so, I mean, and to end like with, with like Delilah giving, giving her baby up for adoption as well. It's like it, all these ideas and like Zelda, you can speak to this too, but like the idea of like, you know, your chosen family and, mm -hmm. and yeah. You know, us like it all in this car together in the ba piled into this pickup truck this like random group of people who have somehow like by like kismet forces like found each other is so beautiful so, yeah absolutely i think i think that theme of chosen family is really emphasized in episode 108 um yeah i definitely i definitely really that resonated with me for sure a lot i i love that theme of chosen family and queerness and queer stories um I just, yeah, the GSA at my school for me definitely did feel a bit like a chosen family. So it's very important for me to kind of have that space and that environment to feel like I was really just accepted no matter what. And I think that these kids have kind of found that by the end of their, um, by the end of the finale, part one finale. Yeah. And I, our, and Ariana's speech in the back where she talks about her yeah. adoption makes me cry just every time. Yeah. yeah so that was actually influenced by um my own adoption story um my birth mother also wanted me to be raised by a gay couple because she really loved the show will and grace and so um that was a little like nod to my own kind of like adoption storyline and how ariana like i i really i really related to ariana in that moment just because it's yeah it's the same same story i love that so much yeah love, and you can just tell like there you can just tell there's such a personal aspect to it and I feel like yeah and Daniel told us all that story on mm -hmm. maybe, maybe on that day on set and everyone was just like oh. yeah. yeah yeah I was sobbing when she was doing that scene right next to me every single time I was just like tears streaming down my face yeah. because Ari uh, Nathania is just like 
so talented and so able to be so in it all the time and she just sucks you into uh the performance and it's really really easy to um be in it with her yeah um and you just feel like i don't know you guys as characters are my chosen family but also in real life i feel like this show came to me yes. right after i got out of high school and that was when i was uh, finally getting comfortable in my own queerness and uh, how I chose to identify because I grew up in a really like conservative town where I didn't have friends that I could talk to my sexual or gender identity about um, and so you guys came at like the perfect time and the show came at a perfect time for me in my personal life to help me so yeah oh my god Kiva yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does really feel like a chosen family and the, I feel like the ev each and every one of us I mean that's why it is like such a it is it's such a safe the, like the set is such a safe space because all the actors like bring so much of their personal s shit and and baggage and and <laughs> like intricacies to the, each of their characters. And I feel like we're always talking about our sexualities, like our personal sexualities on set and how they relate to the characters we play and how they relate to like other people's characters and like being like able to have those like very, very like candid raw conversations where we're just like, like splitting, like, uh, like splaying ourselves out on the table for each other is so like empowering. And so like, it, it really allows you to do your like best work because, yeah, you feel so comfortable in your skin and so comfortable, like, you know, adopting your character's skin and, um, and just like playing out the intricacies of, of their sexualities too. It's just so, it's really, it's really like such a, such a joy to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And like on that note, like who have been some of your guys's like queer mentors or like queer people that you've really looked up to in your life? You, Zelda. Daniel, <laughs> Zelda, Ben. <laughs> I mean, mine's pretty obvious. Like, mine, I mean, like, I was raised by gay parents. And so I think that, like, that's been very important to me in my life. Just, like, I felt like I always had older queer people in my life who I could talk to about queerness and the LGBTQ community and representation and chosen family. So I definitely think that for me, that's been, that's been really important and really special. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a really good friend Hannah Offer who who um I've been friends with for years now who like was honestly I, I mean I grew up in the like Kita in the suburbs of Detroit and it was very repressed and very uh, uh kind of stifling to some extent and I went I went to college and um I met a friend Hannah Offer who I was able to have these like talks about my, my own sexuality and hers and and she I mean she's younger than me but she was much more comfortable and, and in her sexuality than I was and yeah just having having a peer like that it was a, a small chosen family but she was she was definitely my my ally there really oh um I don't know I feel like growing up yeah I don't know no one in particular when i was in high school i mean like i my high school was really gay to be honest to be Same. totally fair like yeah, yeah they were there like everyone was gay at my high school and so like all my my friend group was naturally like it was just i don't know and also my family my family was always like super open and super liberal about talking about all of these things so it was never like i don't know it was an interesting thing growing up because it was never such a thing at like the forefront of my mind really because it was always just kind of around and talked about so it was never something that i thought about all that much to be perfectly honest which was really fucking lucky for me like really 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 lucky yeah absolutely um what were some of your guys's favorite scenes to shoot on the show because i know we've had some very like wild experiences shooting a lot of night shoots um like what were some of the most fun to like be in <laughs> Mm. I think the scenes where we just have work with everyone like when it's mm -hmm. an all cast day just the energy that's on set is so fucking fun 
like just yeah. to blast music and we'll all just like jump around and like hype each other up and that's kind of the energy of the scene that day as well so it's super fun yeah <clears throat> definitely definitely all the stuff together i mean the the pool the motel stuff the pool stuff was really yeah, really really so fun good. it was so well, fun and was so chaotic so chaotic like there's something about like us be like all being in a pool together like like the, it wasn't like we are doing a job for work it was like we are all swimming in the <laughs> pool in the middle of nowhere and like splashing each other and he was doing belly flops and like and yeah and then also i mean that truth or dare scene it's mm -hmm. always so fun like leading like leading up to the kiss like we kind of start the scene and we're all like just doing improv and all like you know like shouting at each other and that just feels like so work it's such an it's such a fun way to flow into a scene when we're just like all like just improving um yeah i love that scene yeah i remember when we were shooting some of the like um gsa meetings pretty early on um in part one i remember you guys would sometimes have like dance parties in between takes and that was like so cute like on the just watching y'all just like blast music and like dance around it was so sweet yeah yes everyone's commenting belly flop <laughs> belly flop do it do it kita you right all, now right, right now, now. <laughs> <laughs> um hotel episode supremacy facts that's facts yeah. <laughs> yeah, seven what... i think is my favorite episode me too seven, honestly yeah, seven, really fun seven yes seven and five five is so good five is so good i love five i love, I love five. all of them i love all of them <laughs> 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 Not Chase coming through with the the diplomatic answers. <laughs> I really think they're they're all good. They all they're all so beautiful. They're all you know all. all. It's like picking a favorite child. Yeah, <laughs> that's very real. Um, what do you guys hope like this this show? Like, I mean, I personally just you know, to start this off, I feel like I in high school, I, I wish I had a show like this, like, my yeah. life would be very different and much more pleasant had I had a show that, you know, offered this kind of this kind of representation, you know, when I was in high school. And yeah, there was there was just nothing like this on, on television at all. And I feel like it would have made me much more comfortable in my skin if I if I had this when I was in high school. What about you guys? Mm -hmm. I, I feel the same way. I think the show, it was the first show that I had ever seen that like exactly pinpoints like adolescent queer feelings. Like all these like little swept under the rug moments that are or normally swept under the rug moments in like um, media that you get to peek into and it's so tangible even if it's just like a look like literally the series of looks that Riley and Greta have towards each other in that sleepover scene or like in the pilot or in the motel like oh my god it hurts so good it's just like <laughs> you know what I mean it's yeah. um but I, I had never seen that like represented on tv the way that you guys did in the show and I cried I sobbed when I saw it for the first time I was like oh I feel like I'm like having a crush again, uh, having a crush again on this really cute girl in high school and it's like eh. yeah. you know? I'm, yeah after I'm watching that scene even Sam Sam Trammell who plays um <laughs> who plays Mark Nathan's dad he was like I was so dropped into that moment. That was so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I felt so like beautiful. I was a girl with a crush on another girl in high in my high school courtyard again. Oh my god! <laughs> so I, I mean, like just like Zelda, that's just such a. I don't know if you heard that com beautiful compliment, but it's just like such a testament to the amount of relatability, and it's like it's so universal. Um, Thank you and, so much. Yeah. yeah. It's the funny. representation, honestly, was a huge inspiration for why I wanted to create this show. I remember just being in middle school and high school and watching all these shows with, like, queer characters, super minor characters, and whose storylines were never really celebrated and who never, like, got their moment, really. And I just always felt like I wanted to see a show that was, like, 
just centering and celebrating queer youth. And so I, I felt like I wasn't seeing enough of that. And that was always really hard for me. It's, it's so validating to see queer characters, but then it's also really sad to often see them being kind of pushed to the side. And so, um, yeah, I really wanted to just create something that, yeah, loved, loved, loved the gays. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I know a lot of people in the comments are talking about how they're in college. And that makes me really happy too, because if I hadn't seen college, it would, it would have made, you know, my experience a lot more pleasant too. And I feel like I, I, it makes me happy that it's like, it reaches that demographic too, because I mean, yeah, people's queer journeys are, are long and, and, <clears throat> and having this kind of thing in college is, you know, the, it's exactly relevant as well to that, to that age group. So it makes me happy. People are also asking about um, dropping the dates for season 1B, but I don't think we can do that. But Generation on Max, the, the Instagram page, did say it's coming this summer. So I don't know they if people know that. did spill that little, yes. little kernel of knowledge. Yep. Summer, baby. Summer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Gay summer, baby. <laughs> Yeah. What is Beely? Everyone's oh, commenting. No. Beely. Not you saying it. Everybody's Sorry, gonna... everyone asked me to say it. It's Beely. <laughs> I said it there. I, I, I want to know what it is. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hot DSA summer. Yeah. <laughs> Hot well. DSA summer. Isn't that crazy that we all know each other? Like the characters. We're a GSA. Like first and foremost, we were a GSA. And then yeah, whatever. Like, and then we all stopped going. And then we yeah. all were like, "Fuck that!" Really? <laughs> this is what we actually wanted. We didn't want a, a bureaucratic high school club telling us we should all hang out together. If we wanted to make out in a motel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like. I think it's interesting. Someone asked me recently, like, because Gen Z is so accepting and because Gen Z is moving in such, like, queer positive direction, like, do you think there's still, like, a need for GSAs and there's still, like, a demand for, like, queer only spaces? And, I mean, what would you guys, what would you guys say to that? I'm just, like, I'm always curious because I did think that was a really good question. I mean, I think, I think it's really, I think it is useful. I mean, there, there is a reason that, that this show like starts in the GSA. I think, you know, there, that sort of peer to peer, like, however kind of structured it is. And, you know, how, like, I, I mean, I know like there is like a, a tendency of high school is to like, to, you know, be kind of above that sort of like organized, um, you know, method of like bringing communities together. But I think there's a, such a real, such a, like a real need for it. And yeah, I think, I think it, that sort of like formal imposition of a community like fosters, like what this show does, it, it bleeds out into being a very like informal, very casual, but like very important sort of community. So I am all for it and I am, you know, yeah, and I mean, we're on, we're on Campus Pride, too. Like, all, all the work they're doing to foster that sort of, you know, top-down community, I think, just, like, th that sort of, like, formal superstructure just, like, gives way to so many beautiful uh, queer senses of community. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. Mic drop, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. My my answer when I was asked that was just that I think as long as like heteronormativity is kind of the standard and as long as like straight is considered to be the default, I think that like queer only spaces and like queer positive spaces will always be really, really important. Absolutely. Yeah. I saw somebody the other day, I think it was like a tweet or something like that, that was like all right, queers, we got to start calling the straights defaults. And that shit had me giggling. <laughs> that was so funny. I don't know why. Defaults only. Oh my... Yes. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I thank you to Campus Pride for, for fostering this little safe queer space. 
Um, <laughs> this was really, it was really good talking to all you guys about all this. this yeah. On- online Thank- GSA. Online yeah. GSA. Aww. Be here every Saturday at 11 a.m. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> Marketing is frantically like, oh, okay, I guess we have to do that. <laughs> we don't have the bandwidth. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh my anyway. god. Uh, thank yeah. you, Campus Bride, for all the beautiful things they are doing, though. I, I, yeah, I, thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, and for supporting Generation and yes. yeah, fourth generation episodes on HBO Max this summer. Get ready. Get Go ready. ready. <laughs> Day summer. All right. Enjoy. Day summer. Love you guys. Love you all. Love you. Bye. Bye.